So it's Jaguar Shoes Collective. This is Short Waves. My name's George Godfrey, and today I am talking to the Pirates. We've got Diego with us. How are you doing, man? Really good. Nice to be here with you, George. It's, it's great to hear from you. You guys, as a band, first came onto my radar way back, and it was the night that you actually played at the Victoria. Three songs in, my mate Tom was crowd surfing up on the ceiling. So I mean, what a <laughs> night! What it was a, a hell of a night. The way you expect shows to go on and the people, the things yeah. I miss now. No, I uh, you and me both. Was that like one of the first times you played in London? It was like properly like our first proper presentation to the city. We had the album fresh under our arm, and it was like the beginning of a like a really, really nice relationship with Love. Absolutely, and that was a night that was put on by our mates at Bad Vibrations. What did you think of the venue? I love it, like the whole thing with the patio there. The people are nice. The sound is really, really good compared like to many other places I've been, mm. and I've been there like watching other people's shows like from time to time. Yeah. Uh, it's been always a good experience. It's just the perfect size like for my kind of shows. I remember like the first thing that shocked me and at the same time I loved it. It was like that you go into into the venue from like the library. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's something I had never seen before. I like that mysterious kind of like secret space where you can go in and watch shows. She's super nice. I love it. Who's your favorite person that you've seen play there? It's not the Pirates. Ooh. Well, I, I have to say, like, I'm a huge, huge fan of the Orioles and we were lucky yeah. enough like to see them play there. That was a gig around your first album, which is Los Niños Sin Miedo. Now, my Spanish is a little bit rusty, but that's Children Without Fear, right? Yeah, we always translate it as Fearless Children or something okay. like that. What was the thing that you were scared of most as a kid? Ooh, I was really, really scared of this movie, The Lost Boys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah another one. I was really scared of vampires. Okay. Because I always thought, like, these guys are so hot, and like, they're immortal, and they're like, <laughs> in the night. So I was uh, if, if vampires are real, I'm I'm dead. <laughs> They're coming. <through>. So, <laughs> yeah, if they come for me, I'm, I'm I'm like this kind of person. I see like these beautiful guys, like they're <laughs> very interesting, and I'll be like, please buy me now. They've got your hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, they got me, and I remember like watching these '80s like punk kids mm. when I was little. Like, oh man, like I kind of want to be them, but they're so scary <laughs> at the same time. Man, I haven't seen that in ages. I'm gonna have to watch it tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because I used to have like proper nightmares of yeah. that movie, but but at the same time, I was attracted to it. So, <laughs> a weird relationship everyone has with fear. Yeah. Like, the urge to, to uh, prove yourself that you're not scared and be attracted to it, but also be wow, frightened to the bones. Do you like watch loads of scary movies or like, or do things that would scare you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to like, do new stuff that I never thought being capable of. Two weeks ago, I started climbing. Okay, yeah. And I was okay. like, oh, I'm scared of that. <laughs> but I had this friend, he was pushing me like, you have to try, we, we're gonna go to the mountain and you're gonna be totally fine, it's, it's safe. So, and so you, next you, thing, you, I'm in a wall life, oh my God. <laughs> so you, you're learning climbing and you went straight to the mountain. You didn't even go to like a, a rock climbing wall or something. No, 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 no. My, my friend, my friend is like crazy. He, he wouldn't let me do that. We, no. I, yeah, I went to a mountain and ended up liking it a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool, man. What was your sort of upbringing like? Were you brought up in a musical family? Were you always playing instruments? My parents were a lot into like Yathra Tool mm, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Like they loved Cat Stevens and that's 
something I'm hitting right now a lot, mm. uh, which is weird, but like they weren't very musical. It's weird, uh, but they put me strangely into accordion classes when I was yeah. tiny. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like a proper DJ <laughs> and holding up like a. I look like one of these North Korean children with the huge guitars. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was with a huge accordion trying to play. I always think it's interesting to sort of learn about artists' first bands. So what was what was your first one like? I've been playing around and singing in bands here in Madrid since I was 12. In, in the beginning of my teenage years, some of my friends in class, we, we decided straight away, like, we're going to have a band, right? Yeah. So we convinced our parents to buy us like these 50 quid uh, cheap electric guitars and stuff like that. Other people were a lot into sports in their teenage years or, or other kinds of art. We were just focused on having like this time together in a rehearsal room and learn how to play and, and try to say things through music. And it was amazing. It eventually like made me like thinking, I can do this, I can yeah. do this on a long term. What's the um, scene like in Madrid then when you're starting out? There's always been here like a big tradition of punk rock and punk. Since the 80s, punk rock has been like the main thing here in Madrid. Also like this kind of like rockabilly kind of vibes. Okay. So we were very influenced by that. They were like the bigger, cool dudes. They never let us in anything of theirs. They were like, oh, these guys are 50. We don't want them here. <laughs> but we still like really admire them. I've just got this really great image of all these guys with like greaser jackets and massive quips, just like, no, you're not coming in, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No garage jump. rock allowed. You little punk. Yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> that so was like their thing. <laughs> but we still got in. We were very sneaky and, yeah, yeah. you know, like getting into the line and fake IDs all the time, so that was our way into the music scene, kind of. You got to do what you got to do. So when did things start with the Parrots then? It's very fun, like after like having all these bands in my teenage years, I kind of quit it because I wanted to uh, study cinema. Okay. And my classes of like the cinema and TV and stuff, I met Alex, the other guy in the back of the band, my, my bro. So I can say that we started properly, like our first rehearsal was in 2009. Okay. okay. It's a long time ago, but our first time recording anything was in 2012. We recorded a demo, really like punk, like in one day we had it mixed and everything, and four songs in one day, proper fast, no money and stuff. Yes. But since then, we we started getting some attention. I don't know why, but like we started getting some attention with that EP and demos. And we started playing in bigger places here, festivals and stuff in, in Spain. And that led to, in 2016, making a, the album. Yeah. So we've been around a long time, but it's, it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, that's quite the journey. What was the... Um first festival that you played then in those early days? It was a festival called uh, SOS. It was a super good experience for us. Morrissey was headlining. Justice, like the techno guys, were yeah. also playing. So we were like going around like the dressing rooms like, hey Justice, <laughs> get a shot with us. And we were partying with like all these yeah. people we admired for a long time and felt part of them and that kind of sense of community made us like, we want to be here every time. We are very big fans of music. We, I personally have been like a proper grouping for so many bands, like trying to sneak into their shows, try to meet them and stuff before I had a band or, yeah, we want to know a lot about you and how about you guys do with your stuff. We always felt it was more about a learning process for us we just wanted like to, oh, these guys do it and they do it hardcore. We want to yeah. like learn from them. Did you get any good advice, any tips? We played many times a few years ago with Mac DeMarco and he was always very, very instructive, like telling us like about the good and the bad things, about touring a lot, meeting people like the Night Beats. Mm. 
and Team Gizzard, they were in our label in Heavenly, and they were like, very up. Oh, I think your music fits exactly with this label. Uh, ooh, we can be kind of like drop patterns here and stuff, like say good words about you guys. Yeah. So, yeah, some of them that we became friends or that they just like the music, like, I think helped us out to be in the place we are now. So. Always be nice to everybody. There, there you go. That's the wise words, definitely. It's interesting you mentioned Heavenly yeah. there because that's a label that you work with and they're such an iconic label known in the UK and all around the world. How did that happen? Like, who, who approached who there? Uh, whoa! Yeah, I think it was like we had some shows with them. We were on the radar, kind of. Like, we, we had been playing with bands from, from the roster and stuff. So Jeff and Danny from Heavenly, they heard us and said, oh, maybe we can do something here. So they set up a small tour in the UK for us with Hoot and Tennis Club. So we played some shows there. We kept talking. We showed them the, the album that we had. And, and then we were partying in America. They came to one show in Texas, uh, in South Park. Yeah. And they just made the decision. And over a pool table, we started signing documents with them, like, <laughs> we're going to be with you guys in the family. It was a great experience, like the way I've always dreamt of, with a label that I actually respect and love. And the way they treat you and the relationship is more of like a friendship and respect kind of each other's work thing than any other place I've been. Mm. So amazing to keep doing stuff with them. Yeah, they're a great label. Shout out to those guys. Uh, so 2020, have you found it sort of useful creatively? Have you been working on new music? Like, What have you been doing with the time? Creatively, it allowed us to be more patient Tom, our producer, is a great guy and one of the things he helped us the most is like to take a little bit of patience when making songs and it allowed us like to take the process of making the record a little bit more seriously, like we were more focused on details and we ended up like doing a great job, I think. It's bad that I say that, but I love it. No, that's not bad though. Yeah. You pick yourself up. If you're proud of it, then... Yeah, I'm proud. I'm proud. Let's, let's just say that. And also, like, we finished doing the album, we started making new things, so it's very good. Like, it took us almost three years to write this album. Yeah. But I think we're on the way to making the next one, like, for the next year, so it's going to be amazing. Like, we found a really nice way to be more productive and mm. to be more centered on writing, which is an amazing thing for us, obviously. Yeah, that's exciting. I guess it puts you in a weird position because when you can get to play in those shows again, I assume it'll be to promote this album, but you're going to have songs from the next one that you're maybe going to want to try. Is that going to be something that you'll do or will you focus just on this album? We made the decision of postponing our album mainly because we wanted to play that. It has great songs. It's a very, very nice evolution to what we have done before. So we decided to postpone it because without the life, it made no sense for us. Like we need to tour, we need to be sweaty, we need to be safe, mainly. And, but we need to play live with the people bouncing and jumping and spitting at us if possible. <laughs> so we're going to start releasing the songs in early 2021. Nice. But we hope that by then we're able like to to make proper good shows and to feel the heat of the people, which is what makes us like very excited and push us forward. Okay, so I've got a few more questions, Diego. These are the Let's pin up go. ones. These are like quick fire, so just answer the first thing that comes into your head, okay? Who was the first person that you saw live? Uh, the first, like, proper show I went to with my own money and stuff, it was a band, American band called Anti-Flight. 
Yes, yes, I love them. I saw, I've seen them a few times. Yes, insane. I saw them in Burnley <laughs> Library, man. But what a show. I was 15. Uh, I have their like LP, like sign, and I was 15 and I went on stage to sing with them. It oh, was sick. amazing. Shout out to Auntie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, love that it. name in ages. Diego, what's your favorite cocktail? Oh, um, my favorite cocktail has to be a uh, Bloody Mary. I love it. Nice, nice. Atletico or Real? Atletico. All the way. Great shot. Who was the first band that you fell in love with? Has to be ooh, The Strokes. I was a lot into the punk rock scene when I was like 10, 11, like, and then I heard like The Strokes and I said, these guys are making it again, like rock yeah. and roll, the way I love them. So yeah, yeah The Strokes. Great show. Uh, who was the last band that you fell in love with? Squid. Yeah, love them, love those guys. Uh, what is the best Christmas song, seeing as it's December now? Mariah, always Mariah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you can't Mariah beat the classic. <laughs> and last question, uh, for anyone who doesn't know the Parrots, what song should they start with? They should start with No Me Gustas, Te Quiero. From that first album. Mate, Diego, thanks so much for coming on and talking to me. Thank oh, you so much. I can't wait to hear these uh, new songs in the new year, so fingers crossed sooner rather than later. Nice one, man. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you soon. Thank you, Daisy, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. up with more short waves at jaguarshoes.com forward slash radio and don't forget to follow us on instagram we're at shortwaves radio and victoria dalston